Well, we'd like to welcome you to a special edition, edition of EMU Today. I'm your host, uh, Mark S. Lee. I'm so pleased to be with you. We hope you're enjoying the summer. We are clearly in very unusual times. And I'd like to welcome you to, again, EMU Today and welcome President James Smith. President Smith, thank you very much for joining me. We appreciate it. How are you? Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me in this virtual world. Yes, this is the very first time we've done EMU Today virtually, so we are leveraging, we have pivoted, if you will, to the new technology, but we want to say this is a special edition because we want to provide you, the viewers, with updates in terms of what's going on at Eastern Michigan University, and a lot's been going on, so we're going to take a few minutes to unpack it. Uh, President Smith, as we get started, uh, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of things are happening nationally across the country. Uh, when it comes to social justice and the movement that's taking place. Um, any thoughts, your perspective that you would like to share with the viewing audience? Uh, certainly, Mark. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, address this critical topic. Uh, we've tried to communicate with the faculty and staff and students around this uh, during the course of the summer. But if you think back, we've been talking about this issue long before uh, Jim Smith became president of Eastern Michigan. Uh, we were proud to have one of the first African-American presidents at a regional comprehensive in America when John Porter was our president. Uh, we've continued to work to diversify our campus, I think, in really significant ways with our work in the center city of Detroit, as well as our work around the globe, recruiting students to a place that we really think is a cosmopolitan university that respects the power of our students, our faculty, our staff, their being, their essence, uh, they are who they are and we respect uh, every element of that. We understand that there is systemic racism uh, in America. Uh, we try to fight that every day. I think you fight it best with education. And uh, if you look at some of our course offerings, and I know you've done this, Mark, because you teach in a college of business and you know those questions, about diversity and inclusion and, and the power of understanding how we are a better place with multiple voices. And we'll continue to do that through the fall. Uh, if we have students who want to march, we're gonna be in support of that. Uh, we've always been a place where peaceful demonstrations are uh, somewhat lauded. We, we've had a lot of them over the years and, and uh, we like what we hear. And sometimes when we don't like what we hear, we need to listen harder. And uh, I believe that's the essence of who Eastern is today and has been for a number of decades now. You know, and you mentioned uh, uh, Dr. Porter, uh, African-American president for Eastern Michigan University. I was fortunate to be the student body president right. when uh, President Porter was the university's president as well. So that goes way back to the early 80s. Uh, thank you very much for providing your perspective and a statement on everything that's happening. And one of the reasons that we're here today and to give you an opportunity to view EMU today is to really talk about uh, COVID-19 and, and the impact it's had on the university at large. Uh, kind of give us your perspective from March through today, uh, if you will, in terms of, of what's been happening and then we'll segue into the fall planning for the university, but kind of give your perspective in terms of how the university has pivoted over the last two or three months as a direct result of the pandemic. Well, again, uh, I hope most of the viewers know this, but we had very short period of time to go from majority on campus in-person classes to all online. And our faculty did really phenomenal work in a matter of three days of taking courses and readjusting them to be online. Uh, it was early March, and we thought maybe five to six weeks we would be in that environment. And now I think we're in week 14 and we're still in that environment. And uh, I work almost every day. I go in about once a week, Mark. I work almost every day from University House. Uh, it looks like I'm in Pease Auditorium. Uh, that's uh, the beauty of having uh, uh, virtual backgrounds. Uh, but between my two iPads here and my uh, my smartphone, I'm able to do an awful lot of what I was able to do on campus now virtually. And our faculty really uh, came to the fore and did phenomenal work. And so did our students. Uh, we've been looking at student reviews. And 
a couple students who have evaluated the transition said, look, I know why I never wanted to take an online course, but it's not the instructor's fault. I just don't like that methodology. Yeah. And, and we understand that, you know, uh, again, not knowing what you teach Mark and how you teach uh, a student would say, I like Mark S. Lee a lot better in person than I do online mm-hmm. because you like to engage, you like to do small group work. Uh, but we were able to meet the needs of students and are still meeting the needs of students now in summer A, just about ready for summer B. Uh, but it has been a very, very uh, different existence. Uh, I've been in higher education 35 years and I've done several TV interviews where people said, did you ever think you would be talking about masks and gloves and testing and inoculations and I said, absolutely not. It never would yeah. have been in my mindset. And keep in mind one thing that's really important, Mark, is we have a lot of staff who are still on campus. We've cleaned every single classroom on our campus. We've cleaned areas where we probably haven't cleaned in five years because when people come back, we want a baseline of absolute cleanliness so that we know how to clean should something happen. We're going to have protocols in place that will be pretty complex. But we need that baseline of absolute cleanliness. So uh, as our students would say, a big shout out to our facilities people who've mm-hmm. been working every day and who've uh, really given their time, energy and effort to get things as we need them to be. We're going to come back and summer be here in one day. We're going to have a few in-person classes starting tomorrow. You know, and as an instructor, President Smith at EMU, uh, I have to applaud the university for making that transition relatively smoothly. You're talking about you know, going from the, the classroom environment into the online environment. And I want to applaud everyone engaged, including the students, uh, the, the administration, the other instructors, professors, everyone who's engaged. And speaking of transitions uh, from, you know, the, the classroom into the online situation, let's, let's transition briefly into the fall. Uh, there will be classes. The plan at, as of this point is to have a classroom instruction on campus. Is that, is that, is that true? That is correct, Mark. We will be on campus. Uh, The percentages will be a little different. We'll probably be more online than we typically are, Uh, but that has to do with spacing and needs of distancing in classrooms. Uh, We have our GIS graduate students who understand that information systems of spacing and uh, global positioning. They're helping us uh, measure out every classroom and then designing that six feet distance we need to have between student A, student B, student C. We're just not going to be able to do as many classes as we normally do on campus. So those that we don't do on campus, we'll do online. We hope to have that all finalized in the next two weeks. Yeah, and and you know, as we talk about the fall too, what part of the, the college experience is the ability to interact with other students on campus and attend on-campus activities and things of that sort, but we know in this time during the pandemic, there's certainly going to be a challenge. But at least, even with social distancing, President, uh, students will get a chance to interact with other students, but in, albeit in a slightly different way. Well, I think about uh, the student center and where people congregate to do uh, group projects, for example. Those will probably be on an iPad or a laptop of some sort where we'll break down and use Zoom technology like you and I are doing now. Mm -hmm. But we'll still have interaction. Uh, Students will, by nature, uh, be able to engage either coming into or out of the classroom, Uh, just like you and I are able now to go to a grocery store pretty pretty easily and and speak to the clerk or or someone we might see in the grocery aisle. We'll be able to have those same kinds of, of communication, just with the appropriate physical distancing. Yeah, with the appropriate physical distancing. Let's segue into that on-campus experience, which is that living on campus. And it's my understanding that Eastern's offering the single room guarantee. What is that? Any student who wants to have a single room in the residence hall, uh, we will make that available to them. Uh, We have taken Phelps and Buell, which are two older halls that you will remember from your days as a student government leader. Mm -hmm. We've put those back into the inventory. We're going to use them for swing space. Uh, but we've now opened those up, and we think we'll have adequate number of single rooms for any student who wants a single room. And then we've reset the price as well, Mark. The uh, We've always had single room availability, but the price, because of the exclusivity of it, has been about $2,500 a year. We've gone down to $100 a month. So mm. for $800 more, 
you're having your own room. Uh, those rooms are actually pretty nice size. So being in there by yourself, you'll have a pretty nice size room. And then most of those rooms have shared bathroom facilities. So instead of four people sharing a bathroom, there'll only be two. And we're going to do some uh, specialized cleaning and cleaning kit availability for students who are in those shared bathroom configurations. Yeah, we have a little bit less than a minute remaining. So how has the response been to that single room guarantee so far? It's been very good. I talked to Kevin Kutra in admissions, and uh, I believe we had 400 inquiries last week. Uh, now, not everybody who inquires will do it because, uh, you know, you've got to make a decision and there is a little more cost on the line, but a great deal of excitement. You know, and it's interesting because uh, as we wrap up and think about the fall, and by the way, we're going to have another discussion next week, uh, next month, month, I should say, next month, as we get closer to the, the fall semester. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity, President, to applaud you and the team for really taking the leadership. You've done an excellent job of communicating with everyone through emails. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today as well. Thank you. My pleasure always. And great to see you, Mark. I haven't seen you in a few weeks. I know. Great to see you as well. Yeah. And speaking of saying things, we're going to invite all of you to hang around and take this campus tour offered by students right now. So sit tight and watch the beautiful exploration of Eastern Michigan University. And we'll be right back with uh, Decky Alexander talking about what else is being done to learn throughout this pandemic. Hello, and welcome to Eastern Michigan University. Our tour guides are super excited to share their favorite parts of campus with you today, and mine is right here in the Student Center. Recently rated number one in the nation by collegerank.net, our Student Center has it all. Not only is it a great place to hang out, it's where you can find a lot of resources, such as the LGBT Resource Center, Study Abroad Office, Vision Community Service Center, Office of Multicultural Affairs, Greek Life Office, and the Campus Life Office. EMU has over 200 student organizations, and it is so easy to start your own. The students that you will meet on campus are from many different backgrounds. Because of the true EMU global rate, students from all over the country and the globe attend EMU without paying any out-of-state or non-resident fees. Eastern is home to over 21,000 students from 46 states and over 40 different countries. As one of the most diverse campuses in Michigan, EMU takes pride in celebrating each individual student and the experiences they bring. There are always tons of events happening on campus, and the Student Center is the hub. We have two art galleries, an auditorium with free Friday night movies, a ballroom that holds large events such as career fairs, and a temporary ice skating rink. This building also holds the annual Undergraduate Research Symposium, where hundreds of EMU students get to show off their academic and creative excellence at a public forum every year. Here at Eastern, we want to put you in the environment that you'll be working in. We have over 200 majors and minors within five colleges. The most popular major, undecided. You could be doing field work at Fish Lake, performing in one of our mini theaters, developing practical skills in the lab, or working hands-on in our community, all in your first year on campus. The eateries are my favorite spot to grab a meal, and it's only a three minute walk from the Student Center. It's right in the middle of four residence halls, and it has so many incredible food options and cool places to meet up with friends. Here's Wise, one of our nine residence halls. I like living on campus because it's so convenient for getting to work, going to downtown Ypsilanti, or taking a quick nap in between classes. It encourages me to get involved on campus, study at the library more often, and meet new, lifelong friends. There's also Wi-Fi, kitchenettes, and student lounges to study and hang out in. My favorite place on campus is the Rec IM. Home to our Olympic-sized pool, jacuzzi, dry sauna, and five floors of recreational facilities, like an overhanging track and exercise rooms like this one. EMU is home to 18 Division I teams, and all of the games are free to attend for students. At the library, we have many resources that will be helpful to you as a student here at EMU. We have study rooms, multiple computer labs, a writing center, a research center, and much more. The library is huge, four floors in fact, and has so many options to accommodate however you like to study. Eastern was founded in 1849 as the first normal school outside of the original 13 colonies. To this day, Eastern has the stellar reputation for making well-rounded educators that are prepared to excel in their fields. 
Our programs are focused on teaching practical skills and putting students into classroom settings. This is Owen, our College of Business, located in downtown Ypsilanti, right in the hub of all the local businesses. Owen has been ranked best in the Midwest for 15 consecutive years by the Princeton Review. Our program is globalized with partners from all across the world. We even have a free shuttle that runs from main campus into downtown to make the commute very convenient. If you're looking for an enhanced academic experience, join us here at the EMU Honors College. We offer exclusive advising, priority registration for classes, scholarships, access to the honors residence halls, and classes capped at 25 students taught by professors who are the best in their field. Eastern is in the heart of Ypsilanti. Ipsy has a depot town and a downtown with great places to eat, a vibrant arts community, and plenty of stores. Not only is it a great place to explore with friends, our vision office is dedicated to connecting students with volunteer service opportunities and making Eagles an impactful part of the Ypsilanti community. Eastern is home to me because it has created an environment where thousands of different people unite in the goal to serve each other. It's a place of learning, personal growth, and professional development that prepares us for the day we leave, but provides friendships and lessons that stay with us for a lifetime. Are you a future Eagle? Apply today. I'd like to welcome you back to EMU today, and I hope you enjoyed that campus tour. Yes, we're trying to get you ready for the fall. We're providing you with a special edition of EMU today to let you know what's going on. So you got President Smith's perspective in terms of what's being done for the fall. And as we think about the pandemic and how students in the university community has been affected, as well as everybody else across the country, uh, people have given back to the community. And I'm so pleased to welcome Decky Alexander, she's a professor and director of the Academic Engagement Program, also Engaged EMU. And Decky, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, welcome and, and good to see you through technology. Love seeing you. I feel like the last, I think I saw you relatively recently. I feel like we were in the same space, but now it seems like eons ago. It, it does. It's been several months. And so, uh, and as we talk about several months, we know that a lot has gone on the last three and a half months. Yeah. And, and at the university, and you're responsible for Engage EMU. Give us a very high overview, high level overview of what that is, and then we'll talk about what the university has been doing to give back. So Engage in EMU is really the university's front door to and with community, and community is business, it's education, it's nonprofits, it, it could be uh, local municipalities. And what that means to be a front door is that we facilitate collaborations. And, and connections and programs with community writ large. And we also in reach to community, bringing them onto the campus and part of our community. So we're kind of this sort of go between, between uh, the community and that is the city of Ypsilanti, that's Ann Arbor, that's Southeast Michigan, uh, as well as um, our university community and inter engaging with all the different entities that work in with communities. So we're this front door that really is a navigator. So that's yeah. the high level view and we have grant programs and revenue generating programs. So that's probably like the, the bird's eye view. And, um, and, and it's a community, you know, you're focused on a community. Talk about the impact that COVID-19 has had in terms of engaging the community? So the really interesting thing about Engage at EMU is when we really constructed this um, from a university standpoint a couple years ago, we really wanted to look at what is a place? Uh, so we have a space at the university that, uh, that we have lots of different community organizations and individuals coming in and now without the ability to have a place, an actual physical space, how do we as EMU engage in community without the physical space? Um, and that was immediately somewhat we thought a possible challenge, but it ended up not being as much of a challenge as we thought because we're not really about a space, we're really about mm -hmm. initiative, ideas, implementation, collaboration. And so uh, on the immediate, you know, we have, we run the largest after school program um, um, in this part of the in, the, in Southeast Michigan, we have 25 after school sites. We run upward bound, we're in the schools. We run a supportive services program for Ypsilanti Housing Commission. So we really were entrenched in and with community on the onset and felt that we really needed to be on day one, like we needed to provide at minimum to be an aggregate of community resources. So before anybody else got out 
aid sources. And we had created a, a, a resource guide that is continually being used throughout the county before any other kinds of organizations had it because so many of us were on the ground already and we could aggregate that and really figure out how to best help our EMU community mm -hmm. as well as community beyond. So and there, um, have been, and there have been many, many COVID related uh, programs and efforts at Eastern Michigan. Talk to us, you know, I know professors have been involved, students yep. have been involved, and talk about what the university community has done during this, this pandemic to really give back and to help the community at large. So uh, one of the very first things we did was launch a pretty large scale PPE uh, that's a face mask and face shield initiative. And we don't do anything. I mean, think it's important unless we're asked to do something, right? So St. Joe's called us uh, their emergency response team. And they said, we cannot source this. We have been partnering with St. Joe's for quite a while on some other initiatives. And they said, could you help us figure out, get to get it's kind of maybe get your students. We have a community work study program to be able to navigate this. So before we did that, we really looked at what was going on in the community and we're about partnerships. We partnership with Makers Work, Ann Arbor Sewing Center, Operation Face Shield, which is like a setup, like ground zero, like in somebody's garage, but they're really, really skilled. And then we looked internal to our resources, Mark, and we looked at our, our faculty in um, design and um, textiles and in physics and in the, in engineering. And we really created a collective of people, of, of a community internal to source the external community. Mm -hmm. And then we started really sending out information and we have the city of Ypsilanti, we just made 3,000 masks for the entire city of Ypsilanti. And we need to understand this is a volunteer course. We don't have a manufacturing facility, right? We, we, we have our college students and we have community members and faculty sitting home sewing. I mean, mm -hmm. this is what's amazing. We set up a whole assembly line at DPS. You have for initially, when we, when, we were, when we had to cut stuff, we couldn't really get back into buildings. We had the cutting group, all right? And people would come to DPS, take a packet and cut masks, right? So we had at one time, 100 volunteers working on some capacity of this. Mm -hmm. It's really led by um, uh, a my grad assistant at the time who, we, who we've continued to work with, Julie Bogle, and then engages um, operations and communications coordinator, Chris and Clacco. So the two of them really championed this and worked with partners. They did all the traveling because it's drop off. So it has been to me, it's the best part of EMU. You know, and as I look, I'm, and I'm glancing at some notes over here. You see me glance with the camera. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Uh, but Eastern's donated over 100,000 items of equipment, yep. including gloves and standard mask and 95 yep. mask, gowns and transparency. The EMU uh, athletics department uh, is making industrial sized washers and dryers available to St. Joseph Mercy, St. Joseph Mercy Ann Arbor Hospital. Uh, other things, uh, the community schools are collaborating, uh, Eastern Michigan's collaborating with community schools. And as you read this and you just kind of go through these notes, and you made an interesting point. This is volunteer. This is not like, you know, people are being paid, but people are volunteering their time. So, so the people who are volunteering, um, how do they feel doing this? And what has been the overall community acceptance when they see people delivering and getting the community involved like this as well? I mean, I... I think it's really been amazing. I think that, I mean, I know we're an engaged institution and I think it just affirmed. I mean, when you have Michigan Medicine calling you saying, our testing sites are open, we don't have any masks. We've all, they know that we can give them to them, that we've been able to create enough uh, of a surplus to be able to, to provide um, our community critical PPE in a moment. So I think what it does, from a community standpoint, it says we are a community engaged institution, which we are, and we can meet our community in a time of crisis. And I think for faculty like Mary Ramsey, she is a faculty member in English and she, um, she's sitting, she's like, you know, I'm sewing today. This is what I'm doing. So it also gave people a sense of purpose. There's a, there was a mother and daughter community team that bonded through the creating of these masks. And then we have a lot of our students 
who, um, because they couldn't do their internships, and I think this is important, they weren't paid, but what we're able to do is make this their internship. And so now they're actually getting the credit they need to be able to continue their studies. So in, in an odd way, us creating a project for community also helped our internal EM, EMU community in this mm -hmm. particular time. You know, and it's, 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 it's important too, because you know, you, you're, you're an instructor there and I'm an instructor there. Yeah. And and we talk about, we, you know, if we talk to our students about becoming involved and becoming engaged. If there is a positive in a situation, uh, this is one of the bright lights to see how our students and university community are reaching back and helping others selflessly. And I think to me, that makes me feel good that, you know, obviously you're leading this effort on behalf of the university. It's got to make you feel great to see that level of oh. involvement by our university. I mean, I love it. So one of the things I love when you talk about just like the selflessness, so we put out this, we wanted to give thank you cards to St. Joe's um, frontline workers. Mm -hmm. And we had people fill out forms. So it got disseminated in the president's communications and we put it on EMU today. And we got three to five, now it's almost up to like 500 responses of just thank you cards. And what we did is we took them in a form and then we created really amazing thank you cards. And if you go to St. Joe's and the emergency rooms, they're all plastered there. Mm. And most of them are, some of them are anonymous. Some, some of them are, I mean, some, I, I get choked up because they're really moving actually. Um, you know, some of them are like, um, they're, they're faith-based, but they're also poetic and, and they just, and they, a lot of them are, they were Emish addresses that sent it to us, mm -hmm. but some of them were not. And it gave people an opportunity to be able to give something uh, because, you know, you couldn't go outside a lot of people, you couldn't do a lot of the uh, essential work, you couldn't sometimes be the service person that you might innately be, but you can write a thank you card. Yeah. Uh, and that was pretty exceptional. So when you say like, what, if it makes me feel good, it's, um, yeah, I think we're really yeah. good people. And yeah. I think we, uh, I think we could always do more and better always, but I think we did some we did our real best and continue to do in this time. Yeah. Yeah, we have a little over a minute remaining. And, and as we think about the rest of the summer, uh, anything that you want to say in terms of if people want to donate or how do they get information to the university if they want to donate items as well? So you can, uh, there is a drop off um, at DPS to be able to drop off supplies um, for other PPE, I believe. And also nursing is continuing to coordinate the supplies to areas. Um, we are continuing to donate PPE that we make fast face masks and face shields. Um, and we have something on our Engage website. If you just go to www.emish.edu slash engage, you can go on there. It tells you all the COVID-19 things that you can initiate. Write a letter, write a thank you card card, donate to our um, crowdsource to be able to get material so we can do PPE. If you're a business and you need something, a small business, we'll give it to you. That's outstanding. Well, well, well Becky Alexander, I want to thank you and applaud you for your efforts. We thank you very much for joining us in you today. Mark, I'm grateful for you. Thank you. And, you know, and as we wrap up, I do want to say this. We want to always thank our frontline workers and everyone who's been engaged. And we appreciate all that you have done in terms of helping all of those who've, who've been suffering and somehow been impacted by COVID-19. I want to thank you very much for joining us today on EMU Today. We will check you out next month, provide you with another update on the special edition of EMU Today. <laughs>